This is a video about understanding models with interactions between two variables. So here, like in the textbook, we're not worrying about the interpretation of the function, if it's structural or a CEF or anything. We're just thinking about properties of the function itself. So here is this g of x1 and x2. There's an intercept term, and then an x1 term and an x2 term, and then this interaction term with x1 times x2, where implicitly the coefficient is negative 1. So one way to think about functions like this is to plug in different values of x1 and see what results as a function of x2. So the first step for doing that is we could rewrite this thinking of x1 as just a constant and write it as intercept plus slope times x2. So in this particular case, we think of x1 as a constant, the intercept is these first two terms together. And then for the slope, we can factor out the x2 from the remaining terms, and we'll have a 4 minus x1 for the slope. Now to get some idea of what this looks like, we could just plug in different values of x1. Now in practice, you'll want to think about what x1 and x2 are economically to think about reasonable values, realistic values of x1 to plug in. Uh, so here, we can imagine to start simple, if we plug in x1 equal to 0, this part zeroes out, so we'll just get 2 for the intercept, this part zeroes out, and we get 4 for the slope. So we get 2 plus 4 x2. We could plug in x1 equal to 1, then the intercept would be 2 plus 2 times 1, or 2 plus 2, which is 4. And then the slope would be 4 minus 1, which is 3. Uh, in some cases, a much larger value, like 10, might be more appropriate. If we plug in 10 for x1, we get 2 plus 2 times 10, or 2 plus 20. We'll have an intercept of 22. And then, oops, I got carried away here. In this case, we'll have 4 minus 10 for the slope, or negative 6. So I'll just scratch that out. Nothing wrong with making mistakes, as long as you catch them. You could also think about, if we notice here, as emphasized by my error, initially for values closer to zero, we were getting a positive slope, and then for this larger x1, we got a negative slope. You could think about when is that value of x1 that gives zero slope. In this case, that would be x1 equal to 4. In that case, we'll get 2 plus 2 times 4, or 2 plus 8 for the intercept. And then 4 minus 4 for the slope, which is 0. So we'll just get a constant this zero slope with respect to x2. And you could imagine 
at least in these simple cases where there are only two regressors, we could plot these different functions. So again, we're thinking of g as a function of a fixed x1 and then whatever x2 is over here. So when we plug in 0, we get uh, 2 plus 4. Let me try to see what sort of uh, scaling would be appropriate. Let's try to guess. So maybe 2 is down here. Just look at the intercepts first. 4, 6, 8, 10, maybe 20, 22, way up there. Um, and so the 22 has this very negative slope with respect to x2, whereas the uh, x equals 0 line actually has a positive slope. And the 10 is just a constant. And the 4 is a little bit shallower. So, of course, you could use different colors or something. You could try to see the difference between these different lines. like that to try to get a sense of the different relationship. You could do the sort of other way around too where you pick fixed values of x2 and then you graph the function with respect to x1 given fixed values of x2. One uh, trap people fall into often is when thinking about the relationship between the function or the outcome variable and x2, they'll sort of just focus in on this linear term here, this positive 4 coefficient. So in this case, if you did that, it would seem like there's a positive relationship between x2 and the outcome. But if x2 is something like uh, what percent of students at a school get a uh, free lunch as sort of a measure of poverty level, and x1 is like the student-teacher ratio at the school. Well, the student-teacher ratio is never zero. It's never even one uh, or four. Even 10 would be very small. It's probably at least 15, let's say. Um, so in spite of this coefficient here being positive, suggesting a positive relationship, you can see once we get more realistic values of x1, we end up with negative coefficients, suggesting a negative relationship. So I just want to point that out since that's a common mistake and you can avoid it by just remembering to try plugging in some realistic value of x1 and then looking at the slope coefficient after you do that.